live debate. IntelligenceSquared.com First thing I say that this is easily the most distinguished set of opponents I've ever had in a debate of this kind, and I have debated against Boris Johnson. So... <laughs> Um, distinguished writers, distinguished journalists, and a distinguished professor, and all of whom I consider to be people who are people who one can have a dialogue with, a discourse with, and not in any sense enemies. Um, but of course, when kind of considering how this debate was likely to go, I did think that however wonderful they were, the first thing we'd attempt to do would be to throw a kind of fog of obscurantism over the course of this debate, because actually we know what this discussion is really about. It's not about whether or not we think Western people are superior to Eastern people. Uh, it's not about race. It's not about literature. It is about cultural relativism. That's what this discussion is essentially about. Western values, as we understand them, not just practiced in the West, practiced in a large number of places, but usually called Western values, are precisely the ones that Ibn Warak laid out. And we know what they are. They are liberal democracy. They are a culture of human rights. They are, and this is very important, freedom of expression. Uh, they are freedom of worship. And they are secular government, secular government, as a consequence of those previous things. They are freedoms to, and they are freedoms from. The fact that the West may often fall short of its own ideals, of its own values, if you like, is testified in the very fact that something like Abu Ghraib, which was mentioned there by Charles, is regarded by us as a blot on our name rather than as a matter of good policy by the government that implemented it as it would have been by the government of Saddam Hussein who had Abu Ghraib before the Americans got there. This is an important distinction, even if it feels less so, possibly, to the person who's actually at the end of the torture. I completely accept that. Now, I agree, obviously, that Western values, as I've just outlined them, can be practiced in, by, in many countries. They're practiced, for instance, in the liberal democracy in India. In Japan, as a consequence, largely, of the Constitution imposed upon the Japanese but accepted by them by the United States after the end of the Second World War. It's practiced in South Korea, it's practiced in many places in Southeast Asia now. It is increasingly practiced around the world, um, increasingly because it is very much more prevalent than it was. So I want to look at one place, just for the moment, at which we can see, what, if you like, what a different set of cultural standards can lead you to, and that is the Islamic Republic of Iran. On the 15th of August 2004, a 16-year-old girl called Atefesh Sahala was hanged in a public square in the Iranian city of Neka, and her death sentence was imposed, and this is the quote, for crimes against chastity. Uh, her father was a drag addict. Her mother had died when she was four. She had been arrested by the police for attending a party and for being alone in a car with a boy. She received her first sentence for crimes against chastity when she was just 13, which also involved getting 100 lashes while in prison. She then, she says, was raped by a former revolutionary guard who was 51. When she was tried for this and found guilty, he was found guilty too, he was sentenced to 95 lashes, and she was hanged. She was hanged. The man who put the noose around her neck was the uh, judge who had sentenced her in the first place. Mariam Ayubi, in her early 30s, around about the same time, was put to death at dawn in Tehran's Evin prison. She was washed, wrapped in a white shroud, carried on a stretcher to an open space. There, she was placed in a hole, and earth was compacted around her, and so on. And she was stoned to death, not for the murder of her husband, which she was found guilty for with somebody else, but for the crime of adultery. In May of that same year, a woman who'd been waiting on death row for eight years was stoned for corruption on earth. She'd been found guilty of taking part in a pornographic film, and her execution at that point was the first stoning for several years. Uh, and just in case you think the practice has died out, in July this year, the Iranian government confirmed that a man was executed by stoning in, the village, in a small village near Takistan. Um, uh, 
uh, the villagers said the sentence was carried out by the local judge and authorities. At the same time, they confirmed that 20 other men were to be given capital punishment for crimes ranging from adultery to immoral behaviour to crimes against religion to sodomy, which is almost certainly a euphemism for homosexuality, which is odd because we now know from President Ahmadinejad in his visit to Columbia University that there are no homosexuals in Iran. <laughs> in the law of the Islamic Republic of Iraq, the father, in a case where people split up, automatically, without appeal, gets custody of a boy over two years or of a girl over seven. Um, in the court of law, two women witnesses are the equal of one male. And I could go on. And so on. This is not some kind of loose notion of how things should be done. It's not some arbitrary, it's not an Abu Ghraib, it's not some kind of strange uh, move away from, uh, from the jurisdiction, from the jurisprudent prudential aspects of what Iran does. That's their policy. Now, the reason why you may say, okay, this is an extreme example, one of the most extreme examples, and that's where I want to take uh, you to the agony, what I consider to be the agony of Professor Tariq Ramadan here, who I consider to be a good man, uh, a very good man, in a debate in 2003 with the now president, Nicolas Sarkozy. Uh, Tariq Ramadan was waylaid by Sarkozy's debating style. He's not a bad debater, Sarkozy, and he was uh, effectively ambushed. But he was asked what he thought about the practice of stoning. And you replied, Tariq, that you favoured a moratorium on such practices, but you refused to condemn the law outright. Sarkozy said, I quote, a moratorium, that is to say we should for a while hold back from stoning women. And you said, no, no, wait, what does a moratorium mean? A moratorium would mean that we absolutely end the application of all of those penalties in order to have a true debate. And my position is that if we arrive at a consensus among Muslims, it will necessarily end. But you cannot, you know, when you're in a community, today on television, I can please the French people who are watching by saying, me, my own position, but my own position doesn't count. What matters is to bring about an evolution in Muslim mentalities, Mr. Sarkozy. And Sarkozy, you can imagine him kind of getting off on this, that's monstrous to stone a woman because she's an adulterer. It's necessary to condemn it. And you, Satarik, Mr. Sarkozy, listen to what I'm saying. When I say my own position is the law is not applicable, that's clear. But today, I speak to Muslims around the world, and I take part, even in the United States, in the Muslim world. You should have a pedagogical posture that makes people discuss things. You can decide all by yourself to be a progressive in the communities. That's too easy. Today, my position is that to say we should... It, my, today, my position is that is to say we should stop. Tariq, what were you saying? What were you saying? I think you were saying that you would lose your audience if you told them, told them that stoning was wrong, that they would somehow be detached from you if you were to say to them outright, look, folks, stoning women is wrong. It is a value I cannot uphold. It is one that I totally and absolutely abhor. It cannot exist in a civilised society. But you could not say that to them because that could not be part of your discourse. You then went to say, Ian Baruma, when, uh, the author, when he interviewed you on the subject, uh, but when you are want to be heard in Muslim countries, so when you're addressing religious issues, you can't just say it has to stop. I think it has to stop, but you have to discuss it within the religious context. There are texts involved. I'm not just talking to Muslims in Europe, but addressing the implementation of hudud everywhere in Indonesia, Pakistan, and the Middle East. That is precisely the point, Harry. Now, are women to enjoy rights equal to those... Sorry. Are women to enjoy rights equal to those of men? Are adults to decide which other adults they have sex with, or is that a cultural tick? And my final point is this. Um, my father was a member of the Communist Party, and he believed for a while that Stalin was indeed a mighty man. And there were around at that time many people who would say that the West was in some way inferior or not superior. The values of the West America were not superior to those properly understood in the Soviet Union if you only just understood the context. You have to learn, I think, Tariq. Your father was very close to Hassan al-Banna and so on the Muslim Brotherhood. You have to learn at some point to say, no, actually, I'm not going along with that anymore. These values of human rights, these values of liberty and so on are superior and I will support them.